Just half an hour ago, I learned uh, the sad news that a former high school friend and brother in hip hop music, my brother Fat Man Scoop, died. I believe he collapsed in the middle of a concert in Connecticut and has now been pronounced dead. I want to share a few stories about a good brother, good hearted brother, and we're going to get started right now. Between the years of 1982 and 1986, I attended a popular Catholic high school in New York City, Bronx, New York, called Cardinal Hayes High School. And uh, there I played track a little bit, uh, ran, played football, and was on student council, met some good, good brothers, some of whom I'm still in contact with. And one of them was a brother named Isaac Freeman. Now, some of the things we did for fun was we would have uh, those of us who did rap or hip hop or were MCs would battle each other. Know, see who's the best MC in the, in, in the school, and this would happen usually at lunch in the cafeteria. And these were big, you know, big deals, big events at that time. Myself and a brother named Jamal would battle uh, other brothers who thought they were good, and it was always entertaining and fun. The person who was always there in the cafeteria, always at the center, banging the table, the beatbox, getting the beat for the, the MCs, was Isaac Freeman. Isaac Freeman would, would, was known to us as Scoop, and would become known later. The music industry is Fat Man Scoop, and you all, I'm sure, know him through some of his big, huge party hits, like Be Faithful. And he would just, he could jump on a song and just take it from zero to 100. Just take that song's energy and put it on steroids. Very enthusiastic brother, very uh, cheerful brother, uh, a lot of fun to be around. And I never heard him say anything ugly or negative about anybody else. Just kind of seemed like he was always just trying to, do his thing, and one thing was for sure, he was in love with and loved hip hop music. So it wasn't surprising to see that people like himself would be so big in hip hop. And we also can't talk about Hayes, Cardinal Hayes High School and hip hop and not talk about uh, Brother Joe Kirkland, who became a famous DJ in the hip hop world, named Diamond D of the legendary Digging in the Crates crew. Shout out to Diamond D and Digging in the Crates. Obviously, after high school, you lose touch because people go off to college or they start working or whatever. They move, they crisscrossing around the country. And it so happened that a mutual friend knew, had a friend who was really maybe best friends with Fat Man School, a brother named Kevin. We kind of reconnected through this brother, Kevin, uh, who was also an educator like myself. At this point, I'm teaching, and Scoop is definitely all over the world doing parties, man, and making these big monster party hits. Uh, so at this point, I'm at a school named Kip. We were supposed to be scheduling some Saturday event, and I wish I could remember exactly why. So when I found out about that, I, I called Scoop up and asked him would he be interested in doing a party at the school. You know? And um, he said, yeah. I asked him how much. He said it was no, no fee. He was doing it for the kids and for me. Uh, so I got back in touch with the principal. He co-signed it, and we were good to go. Unfortunately, on the day of the event, some of the kids were acting up, a few of the kids, and the principal getting mad at that group of kids now canceled the entire show for the entire school of kids that were there, which was unfair. So I tried to plead with him. I said, that's not fair. You know, I got this this brother to come. I knew what the high school would. He, he charges big fees all over the world. He came out here and gave his time for us. That's not right for him, and it's not fair for the kids who didn't do anything wrong. He didn't want to hear that. So now, by the time Scoop comes, I have to share this rather disappointing news with him. And, um, of course, he was a little disappointed, and he was a little mad, kind of like me. He didn't understand why, how a school leader who's supposed to love kids would take such a draconian and hardline position and punish kids that had nothing to do with the disrespectful behavior. He, didn't know, he also didn't understand how he as a working man could not see that he as a working man had come over here and volunteered his labor and time and he wouldn't, ignore, he wouldn't respect that by letting him do the show that he's prepared to do, right? We have to assume he may have had to cancel other things that were paying him maybe to be there. So the principal did not relent. Very hard nose, you know, one of these zero tolerance type of people. Regrettably and reluctantly and, up, and with some degree of indignation, Brother Scoop said, man, I'll get with you, brother. I had to apologize. I said, it's not you. It's that, it's that dude, man. Dudes like him shouldn't be teaching our kids. And it's funny because what, what Scoop said, that that guy, those people like that shouldn't be teaching education, that would come up more and more in, in 
upcoming year. So let, let's say like by the next year, or maybe even later that year, myself and two teachers, Yao Fan and Baba Richard Tanko, we worked together and we started, we left and started a new school called Knowledge and Power Preparatory Academy. Eventually, I got back in touch with Scoop. He would invite me to these parties he was doing. If he was doing like a DJ in a party locally, he'd invite me. This one was in Connecticut. It was off the hook. I know Jones was performing. It was really nice. And I believe that that is the last time that I physically saw and was building with uh, Brother Scoop. So when I heard this news, I kind of didn't believe. At first, it was like, nah, that's probably not. He probably just saying that. He probably got a crisis, but he's not dead. I looked it up. I couldn't see that he had actually died. I couldn't confirm it. And then... The, the report started coming in saying he died. I was like, wow. Uh, me and Scoop were not best friends. We did not call each other and hang out and, and, and go to eat every day. It wasn't like that. But when you go to high school with somebody, you see them every day, Monday through Friday, for four years. Yes, you're going to become friends with them, right? Especially when you share this thing, hip-hop, in common. Um, so I was sad to hear that because he brought a lot of light and levity and beauty uh, to the world through his music. And they got it. the word got out, the man, if you throw a uh, scoop on your record, if you already got a record, if you throw a scoop on it, he could take it from here and ratchet it up a notch because of the energy he brought. Uh, to me, he's kind of reminiscent of a Busta Rhymes in the sense of that energy he brought, you know? And so I think the I want to send a shout out to uh, Scoop's uh, biological family first and foremost. Um, then his extended family of friends, classmates, neighborhood residents he grew up with, and, you know, all the people that loved his music and that, that partied and danced to his music. So with that said, family, peace and black power. Just want to salute the good brother because he was a good brother. And he didn't just think of himself. He had a big heart. He was a good dude. Peace and black power, family. I am this year, 30 years into my career, and to be able to be here and have people call me legendary is a blessing. There's nothing lost on that because this is not food and water. People don't have, people don't have to rock with you. I think everybody who calls me a legend.